This is another camera that's been added to the latest lineup of the G6 Pro range. Meet the G6 Pro Bullet. Let's kick off with the tech specs as that's probably the most important thing that you're going to want to know. So this is a 4K camera at 30 frames per second. It has an 8 megapixel sensor inside and it's the biggest sensor Ubiquiti have put inside their cameras to date. It's a 1 over 1.2 inch sensor and it has a slightly wider field of view than some of the other G6 range. It has a 40 meter IR vision built into it. This can actually expand with an enhancer as well but that's something probably we'll cover in another video ip66 rated and ik04 vandal resistant and it has a 2.36 optical zoom one other thing to note is it does have edge recording capabilities as there's an sd card slot just at the bottom right here. So let's take a look at what comes inside the box. So what comes in the box? So well, we have the camera itself, which we'll look at in just a second. And we have a mount, which now this is fully made of aluminium alloy. It definitely looks a lot longer than the G6 bullet and the AI bullet in terms of the length of this. So that's something that's slightly different. We have the waterproofing for the cable to make it IP66 rated. We have a dismounting tool. So if you need to undo this, once we have it set up, this goes on the side just here so we can tighten and loosen that. And then we have a pole mounting bracket too. So we have a Jubilee clip and we have a pole which then screws onto this, which then goes onto this, which then goes on to this. So you have a variety of different ways on how you can mount this camera. Let's take a look at the camera itself. So a bit more of a physical look. I'll take these off once we get it mounted outside. We have the standard U logo on the side and on the back is where it really counts. So we have a PoE plus input. We have a little logo right here, which shows like an enhancer. So unfortunately I don't have the enhancer to test with this, but that is something that you are gonna be able to attach with this. And then we have a little slot at the bottom right here. This is two torque screws at the bottom and the screwdriver is provided within so we'll go and open this up. That also then reveals the SD card slot in here so for the edge recording you can go and pop an SD card so should you lose network connectivity the camera itself will keep recording. If you lose power that's a completely different thing but as I mentioned if you do lose network connectivity this will continue. For installing it depends on where you're running the cable from. I have one running from underneath there's a little hole under there and that's now falling through. We then need the second piece which we can feed the cable through and screw that onto here and I'll show you how that looks like in just a second. So that's now screwed onto here and we can see we've fed the cable through just there. Now you want to make sure you leave this a little bit loose so you have the ability to, to turn the camera if you need to to get it into the right position. You need to install the waterproofing on it. So we have a cable running through here. This is just a demo. You do need an outdoor rated cable to run through this to make sure it's okay and we can pop that in and just push that straight into there. That will create the seal inside to make sure no water can get through. So now we just need to plug the camera in and make sure we get it into the right direction. Plugging it in, Ethernet cable goes into the back and we can feed this straight on here. Obviously this is a bit difficult to do with one hand, but I'm gonna tie this up and then we can have a look at what it looks like once it's finished. There we go, that's now installed. That bracket's on there. We can tighten this up just so we know we have the torque screwdriver. So we can tighten these up, but I'll do that once I get it exactly in the right place that it wants to be. And then we can finally peel these stickers off too as well. We have the Pro Bullet now set up exactly where we want it. And there's a couple of different settings that we might want to take a look at. We can look at recording modes in here. And this is pretty much what we expect it to be. So I've turned off motion events, kept AI events and audio detection. So everything is turned on at the moment. In terms of the quality and all that, we've kept it all the same. The motion zones, smart zones, it's all pretty much standard. Then we go to the settings. So there's two things I want to highlight to you, and that is the focus and optical zoom. So we have the focus. So when you get this set up, you want to make sure that you have the focus around the same point. And I'm just going to go at the edge of where the block paving is. So the car's in the way at the moment. Hopefully you can see that mark on the screen. That's where I'm hoping to set the autofocus because that's where I want to capture most people that are coming into the driveway. That's the area of focus that I want. So we can click done there. And then the other one is going to be the optical zoom. So if you do want to zoom this in somewhere this is the kind of optical zoom you can see I, I will do a proper test on the optical zoom and put it towards the edge of the drive but I'm just quickly showing you a demonstration just here so you can see that zoomed in and then that will zoom out so you can play around with it it has an adjustment from zero to 100 percent so you can choose the kind of level of zoom that you're after and if you want to play around with image tuning you can do this this is all in here it's not something I'm going to go over in this video but if it's something you want to see a more of a deeper dive on in terms of tuning your image and what impacts of each of those areas but let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I can put something together for you. So I've done a few different tests of me driving in and walking in. So let's take a look at some of the differences between some of these tests. So at the bottom, we have a no zoom on there. So that's standard one times optical zoom. We've zoomed to 50% on the top left. 
and we've zoomed to 100% in the top right. You can see the width of the image get tighter and tighter. So if we start by playing the driving in, so this is me driving in from the edge of my driveway. Unfortunately, I had to drive in with two different cars at this point, but you sort of get the idea of what this looks like. There's 100% optical, 50% and no zoom. And you can see, again, the image is clear. We, as we expect during the daytime, it's very clear and you can see exactly what's going on. With that bigger sensor though, we wanna see the nighttime footage. So this is the nighttime footage of me driving in and you can see definitely there's a lot more clarity on this. I do have a comparison video where we'll compare this against some of the other cameras coming soon, but this is me driving in from the back and you can read the number plate quite clearly. On the top right hand corner, I was probably about 15 meters down my drive. So it does a good job of reading that right there. And then we have the final one of me walking in. Again, the image is a bit blurry towards the back, but as I move closer and closer, it does get clearer. And again, that optical zoom, zooming all the way in, it does a really good job of picking up a clear image. We know the G6 Pro Bullet has a low light sensor. Well, what better time to test this when it is completely low light? So let's give it a test and see how well it works with our normal tests. Before we jump into this, let me just explain what's going on here. So in the top left hand side, I have my driveway lights on and on the rest of the images, they're currently off at this point as I'm really pushing that sensor to its limit so you can see what it can do. Now, keep in mind, you saw the image behind me earlier. It is very dark outside at the moment and there's not a lot of lighting on my driveway. So for what the camera does, I think it does a really good job in terms of picking it up. So if you see me walking in, you'll see I have 50% zoom and 100% zoom as well. You can still meet, make out the figure quite clearly and you can read the license plates in the back. Yeah, there's a bit of light coming from the neighbor's house, but you can read that quite clearly. With the drive-in again, it does a really good job. I have a no zoom, a 50% zoom and 100% zoom. But if we allow the cars to come just that little bit more closer and as they come closer and closer, considering there's no light at all, I think it does a really good job in terms of picking up the license plates. You can definitely read those license plate. It's not 100% clear, but again, and there's not a lot of other lights in the area to shine up that license. So I think this camera definitely does a really good job. And I will do a further comparison with this on a future video where I compare a few different cameras with the low light option. And I'll just pause that again just a second there. You'll see again, it comes a little bit more clearer as you come closer. Let's have a look in Unify Protect. So we have the G6 Pro Bullet just here. And as we expect, as we normally see, we have these sort of options which tell us a little bit about it. If you have an SD card installed, that's where it would pop up right here. So when we go to recording settings, we have the recording options, AI events and audio detections. We can create motion events if we want. And there's two new features that have appeared within Unify Protect dynamic ROI bitrate. And what that basically means, it enhances the video clarity based on region of interest and around smart detections across the camera's field of view. As it also mentions, this will help save bandwidth and processing power when there's no activity. But what this is also key is, is when you have those AI keys and you're looking to look for something in those specific areas, this clarity is definitely going to help that. So we can tick that if that's something that we're interested in. And then we have tamper detection. So if the camera detects that it's physically moved or obstructed, it will lock this in the timeline and you can have a look. And obviously you can set some alarm managers and also you can set some alarm notifications with that also as well. We have the recording quality, again, everything that we tend, tend to see in all the cameras. And then we have the overlay information. Within Unify Protect 6.1, there's a slight change on here. I do have a dedicated video coming on this soon. So we have the zones and lines rather than than this being within the settings it's now its own area so we can set up motion zones smart zones we can set up crossing lines and privacy blackout so it's very easy to see what's going on so if you were to add a smart zone for example and we wanted to cover this sort of area and we wanted to cover loitering we can turn the rest of it off. we can save that and we can cover that sort of area and it gets highlighted just down here. The reason you can't see an image at the moment is because it is sat on the desk right next to me. And you can very easily see what all those different zones look like. We'll do the same with the line crossing. We can click save, appear right below here. So it's very easy to see what's going on. And we'll do just for completeness, we'll add in the privacy blackout and we'll just black out this side, for example, and we'll go and save that. 
and then again you can see that just within the privacy blackout so very useful feature jumping into the settings it's pretty much what you tend to see generally again slightly changing with unified protect 6.1 but we have uh, the microphone options we have hdr we have the status sound and light and it's worth noting with the status light is you do have the big blue glow around the outside of and then we can play around with the image in terms of the settings and then we have the orientation so auto rotate horizontal flip vertical flip hallway mode and we can create the tags. Along with the comparison video, I will be adding in some detections in there, so that will be coming shortly. I wanted to bring you this and show you the image and how well and clear it is. That improved sensor is definitely gonna be a good one for night vision. There's also another video on Protect 6.1. If it's already out, it will be down in the description. So go ahead and check that out. It shows you some of the new features and the capabilities within this camera also as well. But that is just a general unified protect update, not specific to this camera. So what are my thoughts about this camera? Well, the camera is definitely a big chunky one. It's a similar size to the AI Pro. So if you have one of those, it's a very similar size in terms of that. With some of the older brackets, this was a little bit shorter, which would stop this turning the full 90 degrees. And that has that ability too. The bigger sensor does give better low light picture and it will be key when it comes to using things like the AI detections with the AI key. I wanna know what you think of this camera. Is it something that you would look to deploy in your setups or any clients that you have? For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.